Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Insanity walkthrough, and today we will actually tackle the first part of the Leviathan DLC. Last time we left off after what was kind of a cleanup episode, we completed the last two remaining and seven missions, collected a whole bunch of war assets, and basically scanned the entire rest of the galaxy map. So today we'll tackle Leviathan, and to get you back up to speed on what that's all about, let's have a look at the message terminal over here, where quite some time ago we received this message from Admiral Hackett. In the message, Hackett tells us of an Alliance researcher on the Citadel named Dr. Bryson, who has apparently uncovered new information about the Reapers that, and I quote, could have a direct bearing on the war. At the moment, that is all we know, but Hackett urges us to visit Bryson's lab on the Citadel at once, even though at once is definitely interpreted very liberally. Now, being DLC content, we don't have to go to the regular parts of the Citadel to start this. Instead, as we're docking here, we can specifically select Dr. Bryson's lab, and this is where our Leviathan adventure begins. I want you to match this against all known locations and update the map. They contact the field teams for a progress report. Yes, sir. Oh, Commander Shepard, we've been expecting you. Just a moment. And Hadley, could you gather the Leviathan data for us? Apologies, Commander. The rest of my team is out investigating leads right now. I'm Dr. Garrett Bryson, and this is Task Force Aurora. What's your assignment? Our mandate is to investigate legends, rumors, old stories about the Reapers before anyone knew they existed. That's an interesting goal, but is anyone doubting the Reapers exist these days? The Alliance is still desperate for intelligence. Reaper motives, their operational tactics, anything that can give us an edge. And how did you wind up in charge? When the rest of the galaxy says something doesn't exist, I take that as a chance to prove that it does. So you're in it for the challenge? For the truth. Even as late as 2148, humanity still thought aliens were a myth. That was within my lifetime. Once that myth was proven to be reality, our entire history changed. Reapers were part of that reality too. But even they have a history, Commander. If we can just uncover it, there may be a weakness we can exploit. So, first dialogue choice of the mission, and interestingly enough, as far as I know, the entire Leviathan DLC has exactly one morality choice. This one here is not it, but still, let's remain respectful for now. Could have used your help three years ago. Yes. If people had paid more attention to your Prothean beacon, we might not be in this war. But now with new information we've uncovered, a breakthrough's near. Hadley, do you have the data? No! <laughs> This is Commander Shepard. I need C-Sec at my location, now! You shouldn't be here. The darkness can't be breached. Transit records show his name is Derek Hadley. He's worked here for a couple months. Shepard, I monitored a C-Sec alert from this location. Were you harmed? I'm fine. But I could use your help sorting this out, Edie. Take a look through their files. I need to know what this task force was up to. At once. What? I... What's happening? Okay, so after the Paragon interrupt earlier, we are now back with another dialogue choice. This one though, really just a choice of tone. But with the rather curious circumstances of this attack, I think the option at the top is a bit more suitable. You tell me. I... I was gathering our data when you arrived, and then... It was dark. Cold. Like... I was someplace else. And then? I don't know! A gun was in my hand. Dr. Bryson, there was a loud... You shot Bryson. You killed him. No, I couldn't have. I'm not a murderer. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. You have to believe that. Again then, the renegade interrupt is not actually making anything worse in terms of morality points. Still, let's remain inquisitive. I think we all have a hunch what happened here. So someone else pulled that trigger? But I would never do that! Commander, this does resemble reports of indoctrination. Indoctrination? Me? 
What about that Leviathan Bryson mentioned? How does that tie in? It's some kind of creature. Our field teams have been tracking it. That artifact came in from our researcher, Garneau. He sent an audio log if you want to... What's wrong? Turn back. What are you talking about? The darkness cannot be breached. Damn it. Get him over to the clinic. See if they can tell us what's wrong with him. Yes, sir. Commander, you'll want to see this. It's an outgoing message from Dr. Bryson to Admiral Hackett. Dr. Bryson, you have an update? Admiral, the Leviathan of Dis that we've been investigating, I think we're really onto something. Give me the brief. About 20 years ago, the Batarians discovered a Reaper corpse that had died in battle. They covered it up and denied it ever existed. But I'm intrigued by the larger implication. What could have killed the Reaper in the first place? Exactly. That's the real Leviathan. It's worth pursuing. Continue your investigation and update me on the progress. There is also a follow-up message from a few weeks later. Admiral, the Reapers are shadowing my field teams as if they're hunting Leviathan themselves. Whatever it is, I believe Leviathan is nothing less than a Reaper killer. Almost an apex predator, and it has them nervous. If we could just find it, imagine the impact on the war. I'm formally requesting assistance in tracking it down. You'll have it. This is now your top priority, Doctor. Find that thing. It appears we were meant to be that assistance. Okay, so supposedly we are dealing with a Reaper killer, and yes, that sounds both dangerous and potentially useful. So either option here is fine. We'll stick with the one at the top, though. Anything capable of killing a Reaper could do a lot of collateral damage. Yet given the state of this conflict, I believe the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, may be relevant. But we won't know unless we can find it. Bryson's assistant did say they recently received a log from their field researcher. It may yield more information. Okay, and as you can see, that audio log is definitely not hard to find. Until we interact with it, there also isn't that much more to do in this lab, so let's listen to it right away. This must be the artifact the assistant mentioned. And here's the log. Dr. Bryson, it's Garneau. I'm sending you an artifact I found. About the only thing I found there, in fact. Maybe it's nothing, but I'd swear Leviathan came through here. I'm gonna crunch some numbers, burn up the rest of this project travel allowance. Maybe I can project our Reaper killer's movements. I'll check in when I get to the next site. Garneau appears to be our best lead to track Leviathan, but he does not state a destination. And again, more dialogue choices that ultimately lead to the same result. There is no need to be overly harsh to our resident AI though, so let's stick with the one at the top. Let's focus on what he does say then. He mentioned extrapolating Leviathan's path. And crunching numbers. He wasn't flying blind. He had data. A significant amount of data, judging by this office. So how do we narrow it down? Bryson and his colleagues evidently used a galaxy map search program in their hunt for Leviathan. It may help us locate Garneau. Okay, and so the puzzle begins, and again there is no harm in interacting with the galaxy map right away here. So let's do that to prompt Edie into sharing a bit more info about how all of this works. Does this tell us where Garneau went? No, but we may be able to narrow down his location if we find clues he was using in his search for Leviathan. And yes, this is where we now play detective, and the first clue can actually be found right next to the galaxy map. Is this Prothean? Yes. I believe Dr. Bryson and Liara would have had much to discuss. Can you add a search filter for locations known to have Prothean ruins or artifacts? Adding the search filter, you may examine the results on the Galaxy Map program. And indeed, that is how it works. We need to find more and more clues for Edie to add more and more search filters, which then narrows down the list of potential locations. These are all murders in which the accused lacked a known motive and claimed memory loss. Just like Bryson's assistant. You think Garneau was following a trail of blackout crimes? It is possible. We need to find data matching dates and locations for crimes of this nature. Here's the time and date chart for the crimes. Can you filter for murders where the killer claimed memory loss? Adding this search filter to the galaxy map. Okay, so with the Prothean activity and blackout crimes filters added, we can now head over to the second half of the lab. And here, the first thing we want to do is to watch this video log. Sir, this is Bryson. 
We know the Reapers are after Leviathan. Studying Reaper hunting patterns could be vital to finding it. That date is classified top secret, Dr. Bryson. If it falls into the wrong hands... It won't. The data's encrypted. I'll keep the decryption key safe. Close to my heart. Close to his heart? What the hell does that mean? Well, we better figure that out, otherwise the data here remains more or less useless. The Reaper fleet activity is encrypted, per Bryson's statement in the log. He said he was keeping the decryption key close to his heart. Sovereign, vanguard of our destruction. How's that working out for you, big guy? And yes indeed, an original piece of the Reaper Sovereign, just one of several throwbacks to Mass Effect 1 we can find in this lab, the second one being a log entry on the Thorian and its mind controlling capabilities, a process very similar to the Reaper's indoctrination, and what we saw during the attack on Dr. Bryson earlier also seemed very familiar, and so it is probably correctly theorized here that Leviathan uses a very similar controlling technique. Bryson was tracking unexplained creature sightings. The photographs have a trace chemical residue. It may be visible under another light source. Bryson was not merely tracking sightings. He was attempting to extrapolate a course. And Garneau could have been following that course. Edie, can you add a search filter for systems along that projected path? Adding the search filter now. Alright, that's filter number three added, and going over to the rocks here, we'll quickly add number four. Meteorite fragment, maybe? He was studying it as an object of importance. We should look more closely at a sample. Meteorite sample. With traces of element zero. Would Leviathan need Ezo? While it is not consumed as fuel during FTL travel, element zero will decay after several centuries of active use. If Leviathan is old enough, it would need to replenish its supplies. Okay. Can you give me a search filter for locations with element zero? Adding it now. Okay, so that's filter number four added, and in all of the detective work, let's also not forget to pick up the weapon upgrade over here. And afterwards, we can then watch yet another video log. March 7th, 2186. I'm looking at the Rachni. Their movements during the Rachni Wars suggest alien influence. But the timing is wrong, and Rachni weren't implanted with Reaper tech. What if Leviathan was preparing the Rachni to fight the Reapers? What do you think, Edie? It is possible that Bryson's team is using ancient Rachni fleet activity to find Leviathan. If we can find data on the movement of ancient Rachni ships, it may help us narrow our search. Those appear to be sightings of ships that match Rachni signatures. Can you add a cross-reference for locations of sightings? Doing so now. Okay, so Protheans, Element Zero, Rachni, all of that might play a role in finding Leviathan, and perhaps the simple drawing here does too. By Anne Bryson, age nine. Records indicate Anne is now 28. She works for the Alliance. Bryson was keeping the encryption key close to his heart. What's closer than family? An interesting hypothesis, but I detect no trace of the decryption key in this art. Still, it is a lead that we do not want to forget about entirely as we head up the stairs here, because in these small personal quarters over here we can actually find another drawing. Another piece of Anne Bryson's childhood art. Wait a minute. We'll take a look at that. I can use these numbers to construct a decryption key. Alright, let's get back to the data pad we found earlier. Right, we found the decryption key, but before we leave, let's also listen to the audio log over here. Dr. Bryson, per your request, I'm clearing Task Force Aurora for intercepted Batarian communications regarding the Leviathan of Dis. Commander, the Dreadnought is in custody, but the Solarians may have surveillance footage. Our ambassador will issue a full denial. Give me your preliminary analysis. Several million years old, at least, and its technology outstrips anything on the Council. Excellent. Our scientists will work day and night to bring its secrets to the hegemony. One concern, Commander. The real Leviathan of Dis, the thing that destroyed the ship, is still out there. Unaccounted for. Irrelevant. The ship is our priority. And as far as the rest of the galaxy is concerned, there is no Leviathan of Dis. There never was. 
Right, a very interesting log entry here, which reinforces the theory that whatever Leviathan is, it is capable of killing Reapers. The only question we now need to answer is whether that's good or bad. Before we do that though, let's quickly head outside here to grab another well-hidden weapon upgrade. And then, with the encryption key in hand, let's see what all of this mysterious data is about. Decryption complete. Analyzing data. These movements do not match the standard invasion pattern. The Reapers are searching for something. And I'll bet Garneau used this intel. Can you make a search filter for it? Of course. Alright, and with that we have now acquired all six available search filters, which means the only thing left for us to do is to head back to the galaxy map and apply them one by one and see what location we end up with. Reaper activity? Based on the search results, Garno is in one of these five systems. I have marked the Normandy map with possible locations. We can leave now, unless you wish to further narrow the search. And indeed we do, we actually get an achievement for it, so let's keep adding filters. Prothean artifacts. No results. Some of our search parameters may be irrelevant. Five possible systems. Element zero deposits. Three possibilities. Rachni activity. No results. Some of our search parameters may be irrelevant. Three possibilities. Blackout crimes? No results. Some of our search parameters may be irrelevant. Three possibilities. Alien sightings. We have a match. Marking the galaxy map. Good. Let's go find Garneau. And there we go. However, before we leave, let's actually quickly interact with one very peculiar object. Yes, this Bryson experiment is nothing else but a severed husk head, and we can continuously interact with it to force it to scream. And one might think that we can do that seemingly an infinite number of times. However, if we do it for long enough, something interesting will happen. As far as I know, the number of times you need to interact with it for that to happen is actually randomized. It should not take more than 15 to 20 attempts though. And there we go, the head has just exploded from screeching too much. However, for us in this completionist playthrough, that is actually not the result we want. So instead, let's magically teleport ourselves over to a timeline where we did not just do that. And with the head still intact, we can nip outside to grab two more weapon upgrades. And once we have collected both of those, we can now take the shuttle back to the Normandy. Okay, so here we are, and despite already having a location for Dr. Garneau, we are not launching our journey just yet. Instead, let's quickly head down to the crew deck, where we can listen in to another interesting discussion. We're all machines. Carbon or silicon. Is there really a difference? People feel emotion. Artificial intelligence is programmed. Punch me, I get angry. I don't choose. I just get angry. Our emotions are programming. That's not the same thing. Our emotions are a natural response. Disease, parasites, lions ate their prey alive. Nature can be horrible. So now you're siding with the Reapers? Just because I'm saying the Reapers are alive doesn't mean I want them to stay that way. But we need to break free of nature and open our minds to new forms of life. So you believe the Geth share the same rights and liberties as any organic being? If that Geth is minding his own business, he has more rights than Cerberus. Despite my disgust for Cerberus, they're still human. The Geth are just machines. Genetics don't make us alive. It's our self-awareness, curiosity, and capacity to evolve. Well put, Commander. 
Of course you'd say that. You two are practically machines yourselves. Full disclosure, it does not matter who you side with here, I just found Chakwas' reaction a bit more entertaining. And in my opinion, for this topic, there really is no black and white right or wrong answer. I've studied Protheans my entire life. If I'd been shown the beacon on Thessia earlier... You would have needed Shepard's cipher to comprehend it. I still could have learned from it. Instead, my mother hid the galaxy's most important archaeological find from me. It must have been such a joke to her when I became a Prothean researcher. The penalties for withholding Prothean technology are among the harshest in Council space. Your mother's motives may have been simply to shield you. Perhaps. Thank you, Edie. I hadn't considered that. Alright, so Liara still seems to be processing the events of Thessia. In the meantime though, she did create two more entries in her broker terminal. The first one here, a list of potential titles for her upcoming book about the Protheans. The second one, a bit more introspective, as Liara realizes that Javik is but one Prothean and not necessarily representative of the entire species. And it also sounds here like the two of them start to get along a little bit better. Thanks for coming by. Anyway, that is actually not really what we're here for. Instead, in last episode's grand scanning session, we have obtained two more intel rewards, so let's quickly grab ourselves two more bonuses before we get going. With the research data from Pragia, we are going for the power cooldown bonus. The way we have built up our characters, most of the powers are used for crowd control rather than pure damage output, and being able to use them more often definitely fits that strategy. With the Volus Intelligence Archives, meanwhile, we can choose between a power damage bonus and a health bonus, and this time we are actually going for power damage. In my experience, on Insanity difficulty, it doesn't really matter how much you boost your health. Ultimately, the best way to survive is to not take any health damage in the first place. Alright, and with that, we have now actually obtained all intel rewards in the game, and considering that we have also already reached max level, we are pretty much as powerful as we can be. However, there are still a few things left that we can do to increase our damage output. One of them would be to upgrade today's weapon to level 5. And thankfully, we have enough money to do so, even though the Striker Assault Rifle is a bit more on the expensive side. And among the Assault Rifles, it is actually also one of the more interesting weapons in the game, as its rounds actually deal explosive splash damage, but we'll see that in action soon enough. Just got word from Ms. Sato. She arrived at the Alliance Research Facility safe and sound. Yeah, and Esteban got to play hero with the damsel in distress. You know me and my damsels, Mr. Vega? That I do. Cortez then referencing Grace Sato, the scientist that we rescued from Cerberus in one of the N7 missions last time. And actually, during that mission, we went all in on the melee kills, which is why we now want to switch Shepard's armor back to dealing as much weapon damage as possible, as a melee-only strategy is not really suited for what comes next. And with that, our preparations are now in fact done. So let's head back up to the CIC, fire up the galaxy map, and then we head over to the Kelliston Rift, the cluster where we eventually pinned down Dr. Carnot. Right, so as you can see, there are actually two systems in this cluster and we can do a bit of scanning. However, I think we'll do that at the end of the episode. For now, the ISUR system is our destination and in here we actually want to fly into the asteroid belt, which quickly reveals today's point of interest. I found something. We have located Garneau. Right, so it looks like today's destination is a mining facility on an asteroid. Definitely very remote. Let's assemble our crew and see what awaits us. And for this mission, we are going with Edie and James for a good amount of anti-armor abilities. All in all, though, squad selection is not really a huge factor during this mission. Weapon-wise, we are then going with the Striker, upgraded for more damage and armor piercing, while neither the loadouts nor the powers of our companions see any changes, and with that we are good to go. We're about five minutes out, Commander. What exactly is on this asteroid? Mining facility. TGS Mineral Works. Small operation. Could be a good place for Leviathan to hide. We've all read Edie's notes on Bryson's lab. Any questions? Any more intel on what this Leviathan could have been? Not really. We only know it killed a Reaper. But it is Garneau, Dr. Bryson's associate, that we are looking for. Right. If we find Garneau, we find Leviathan. Agreed. Once again then, another dialogue choice mostly for flavor, but yes indeed, whatever Leviathan is, it might be a good idea to find it, and quickly. The doctor was right. Anything powerful enough to kill a reaper needs to be investigated. 
I just hope Garneau has the answers we need. I'm reading Reaper enemy signatures in the asteroid field. Brayson said they were shadowing his field teams. If they're after Leviathan too, Reapers are a good sign. That's not something you hear every day. Take us in. As you can probably imagine, it won't be quite as straightforward. And as we head down the elevator here, you'll also notice why. Scouting party. And by the sound of it, they're pissed off. Right, so we have some Reapers present, but also we have Surprise on our side, which allows us to launch a powerful ability combo that immediately kills both Marauders. And well, Brutes have not really been any trouble for us at all in this playthrough, and this one is no different. Once it's down, we do then actually have a second one show up, but again, with a good amount of distance between us and the target, it shouldn't be too difficult to take out. Let's get Garneau before the serious troops arrive. The civilians inside aren't likely to be worried. Now on the right over here, you can see it, there is some ammo, should you need it. We don't though, especially since there is another crate right up the stairs next to a medkit. Our way onwards then goes through a double set of doors here, behind which things are slowly starting to get interesting. Welcome to TGS Mineral Works. All guests need to sign in at reception. What's with this business as usual? Commander Shepard of the Alliance. You just had Reaper troops attacking your front door. Are they still there? I've taken care of them for now. I see. That will be all. That will be. Hello? Yes. Welcome to TGS Mineral Works. How can we help you? Yes, for the tour. Please sign in. You don't seem worried about those Reapers. You know something I don't? TGS Mineral Works is a small to mid-level supplier of tungsten to the galaxy. That's not what I meant. Are you familiar with the applications of tungsten? And because I don't think that just telling them to snap out of it is going to be a solution, let us instead just ask for help. Maybe that gets us somewhere. I'm looking for a researcher named Dr. Garneau. He would have arrived within the last couple weeks. If he's still here, I need to speak to him. We have no Dr. Garneau. Do you need to see a doctor? How about I just go in and look around? No. The access elevator is broken. And now, we're done. Step away. Step away. You don't belong here. Something ain't right here, loco. Let's look around. Careful. And yeah, clearly something isn't quite as it should be. Let's have a look around and find out more. He was living in the ducts. Where is he now? Safe. Locked up. He can't hurt us now. And again, that doesn't sound suspicious in the slightest. Excuse me. You don't belong here. Okay, so it looks like the workers won't be of much use when it comes to gathering information, so the data pad over here might be of more use, mentioning two names, as well as a rather unceremonious reassignment of a certain Dr. Triffin, so it looks like whoever runs this place is not messing around. You can't be in here. I will call security. 
The next data pad here is then very interesting considering this is a mining facility, as it speaks of a test subject being pushed past his emotional breaking point, something you wouldn't exactly expect in a mining facility on an asteroid. Turn back. Return to your ship, Commander. Go. The people seem fearful. It is difficult to determine why. Need to fix that elevator. Yes, it was an accident, but he died. I don't know what to think about that. I'm looking for a Dr. Garneau. I don't know what you mean. Aren't you worried about the Reapers? We know nothing. Go away. You don't belong here. And again, we are only met with more of this emotionless hostility. Welcome to TGS Mineral Works. Proud providers of tungsten since 2162. And apparently also performing secret experiments on test subjects, but well, that's probably another movie. Repair terminal activated. I'll set the drone to repair the elevator, but we have to stay with it. And yes, we now have to stay within that blue radius around the drone and guide it towards the door, which should hopefully allow us to regain access to the elevator. In the elevator control log, we can then see that Dr. Gano has apparently used this elevator in the last seven days, so it is rather curious that we were told earlier that he never came here, but then again the people in here are clearly not right, and their behavior does show some similarities to being indoctrinated. Elevator security log said Garneau came through here in the last week. Why lie? No idea. Let's hope we don't have to look too far. Alright, so no signs of Dr. Gano just yet, but coming up onto the next area, we first want to take a left for another data pad, this one talking about a study on the stomach contents of Varin, once again a rather unfitting of what is supposed to be a mining facility. Behind this first door then, both of them actually lead into the same area by the way, we have another terminal, and this one curiously talks about data on how historical weather events have affected Hanna government, once again begging the question what this facility is actually being used for. I see a trend among the miners. They appear to be doing everything but mining. Turn back. You shouldn't be here. This is a restricted area. Personnel ID number is required. I don't have that. Access denied. Now, we do want to keep this personal ID number stuff in mind as we examine another data pad. This one, just another curiosity, talking about exceedingly dangerous crossbreed plants. Again, not exactly mining work. Even estimating 60 days for complete global starvation, that's the merciful room. Absolutely. That's the data to use. And yes, at this point we do have to agree with Edie. The workers here seem to do everything but mining. The terrain pain threshold before psychosis is too high. What if the pain stimuli is applied more quickly? Interesting. We should look into that. Interestingly enough, we can also see a pattern of workers shutting themselves off from us. So at this point I think it's quite clear that the people here have something to hide. Right, so next to a personal ID number, we also want to keep our eyes open for a level 5 passcode. Until then, we have no other choice but to keep moving. Again, very interesting here that the workers are shutting down the map as soon as we enter the room. And also very interesting is this next data pad entry, as it mentions electrical storm activity delaying communications. So curiously, just in the week that Garneau visits, communication is limited. On the bright side, we have a door here that we can open with a data pad behind it, this one neatly tying in to what we read earlier. Attention. Calm system is offline. This message was not sent. Bryson. Here's the nav point. That's where I'll be. If something happens, I'm attached 
patching a passcode that I hacked together. It'll open any security terminal. Bryson, something is very wrong here. Please hurry. Burn them out. So, he's still here. Do we have that passcode hack? Yep, we just get to the security terminal and plug in the code. Right, lovely, but before we go back for the terminal, let's explore just a little bit more. TGS Mineral Works has an eye on the future. Cutting edge research drives us forward. And well, I guess they're interpreting the word research rather liberally. Either way, we have one more area to explore, and going all this way will actually save us some backtracking later. You shouldn't be here. The researcher then again not too talkative, and the same likely goes for the video terminal. TGS Mineral Works is focused on. And yes, you see that right, the screen just switched to a camera recording us, and unfortunately we don't learn what the company is actually focused on. Turn back. The researcher in this room over here then also watches that footage rather attentively, allowing us to pick up the personal ID number of Jeremy Brown from the data pad right next to them. Personnel ID. I don't have that. Access denied. Okay, so now this is where we eventually want to go, and as you just heard, we need an active patient file number. And maybe, now that we should have access to both that security console as well as to that locked room at the beginning, we can perhaps find one such file number somewhere. Security terminal's back there, Commander. And yes, we walked right past that, but only because we want to take care of that locked door first. ID 231-95. Access granted. And there we go, the door opens and we have access to the crew quarters, where we can first find a rather heartbreaking data pad entry, a message to a worker named Andrea from her father who's begging her to come home. Also of note is the year of the message, 2178, as the events of Mass Effect 3 take place in the year 2186, in other words, this message is 8 years old. Around the corner then, behind a pistol upgrade, we can find another interesting data pad. This one actually being even older and indicating that mining operations in the facility were shut down around 11 years ago. So all of those glimpses we just had into other fields of research, yep, those have been going on for quite some time. Still, at this point, there really isn't anything we can do with that information other than to stay alert. Thankfully, with Garneau's terminal hack, we should at least have access to the security console now. So let's see if that somehow helps us out. Punch in Garneau's terminal hack and see what it gets us. Access granted. A ship dropped him off a week ago. It appears he had full access at one point before going into hiding. Unknown male was involved in an altercation in the mines. Garneau was heading to the mines. Looks like he was taken to the med bay. You are in the mineral lab, a low security, all access area. The med bay is restricted to authorized personnel with active patient file numbers. I have the file number. Let's go get Garneau. Okay, so with that we now have ourselves a file number and we also already know where the med bay door is. So let's head over there and find out whether or not Gunno is actually still here. Admittedly though, that would be a little bit too easy now, wouldn't it? This is a restricted area. An active patient file number is required. File 7364. Access granted. Okay, so here we are right inside of the med bay. As you can see, the area is eerily quiet and devoid of any people. So if Garneau is actually still here, chances are that he's not being tended to regularly. Is that Garneau? Hope the hell it isn't. If you are looking for Garneau, you have found him. I am Dr. Garneau. I'm Commander Shepard of the Alliance. Are you alright? Yes. Only I'm trapped in here. What's been going on in this place? I was doing my research. 
until the incident. They attacked you? It's true. But aside from my confinement, I'm fine. Alright, so mentally he at least seems to be in a slightly better state than the rest of the facility. And with both dialogue options here more or less leading to the same results, let's stay friendly for now. Bryson's research led me to you. Bryson sent you? He's dead, Doctor. Killed by his assistant. I see. I need you to tell me everything you found on the Leviathan. Bryson seemed to think it killed a Reaper. It's a myth. A dead end. What about the artifact you talked about in your message? I did? No. Yes, Doctor. You did. But now we've got Reaper forces attacking, so I need to break you up. We'll grab the artifact and go. Reapers. The darkness must not be breached. The darkness? Why do you pursue me? Doctor? Leave the artifact. You will not take what is mine. I don't believe we are speaking to Garneau. You. You killed a Reaper. I need your help. You bring only death. Right, so it looks like we are on the right path, although it offers a bit more resistance than we might have bargained for. Either way, the chase is on, so let's get moving. Someone cut the power. There he goes. Leave this place. Wait! We need to get to that artifact before he does. He said it was in the mines. We'll need to find a different route. And coincidentally, the ladder here is just what we're looking for. Garno's notes gave us a nap point for the artifact. Nap shows a service door at the next tram station. Looks like we're not the only ones headed that way. I am noticing a pattern. Despite the law of averages, we never find the reapers moving in a direction away from us. Alright, and with Edie being a bit funny here, we're finally back into combat. Garneau has ran off for now and we need to find a service door, although the husks here are trying to make that a little bit more difficult. Their presence, however, is actually rather convenient as it allows us to grab a few more melee kills. And once the area is cleared, we can continue. Although, of course, we don't want to miss grabbing the SMG weapon upgrade over here. We are then greeted by more husks and Shepard actually gets to tangle with one for a second. The encounter ends in our favor though, and now things get a bit more tricky. Of course, a small wave of husks is not the only thing the Reapers are throwing our way, and so we now also have a couple of Marauders and Ravagers to deal with. Since the Marauders can actually move and jump over obstacles, I think it's best to deal with them first. The Ravagers are a bit more dangerous if they manage to hit us, but they remain stationary while doing so. Heads up. Enemies on that upper balcony. Watch our flank. So simply staying behind cover should keep us mostly safe from them. At this point, we can perhaps also talk briefly about the Striker Assault Rifle we are wielding. It is actually capable of firing automatically, albeit not super fast. I personally prefer to use it more like the Maddock though, with more precise single shots. The damage output, as well as the small amount of splash damage from the explosive rounds is usually enough for that to suffice. Not to mention that its ammo capacity is also somewhat limited. Now regarding the fight itself, one of the key challenges is likely that slightly elevated walkway to our left. Some of the Marauders really like to use that to flank us from above, so it's definitely a good idea to keep our eyes on that area. As soon as the last enemy falls, then we want to make a beeline for this small platform here, because conveniently placed over here is a Reaper Black Star, and you've heard it already, we have two Banshees incoming, who we can very quickly dispose of with the one shot this weapon gives us. There's the door. Okay, let's find that artifact. Afterwards, what is left is then only another Ravager all the way in the back. I think a second one might have dropped down with the Banshees, but it got killed in the explosion earlier. At this point then, all that is left are a few husks, great targets for a few melee kills. And once they're down and the Ravager is also finally taken care of, the path should be clear. Emerging from the dead Ravager, we then also have these little swarmers, but they pose no threat to us and neatly illustrate that our weapon does in fact do a small amount of splash damage. 
Now, before we interact with the door, let's quickly grab some loot, a medkit in the corner here, should we need it, and then also another pistol upgrade. And now I think we're ready to crack open the door and continue our hunt for Gano. What was that? Looks like the door's power supply has been cut. I'm seeing the trouble spots. The drone could handle it. We'll need to escort it. Unfortunately, the drone is damaged and is on reserve power. Let's make it quick then. Okay, so it appears the drone guiding minigame from earlier is back. Our first destination here is marked in blue. And just to show it, this is what happens when you move too far away from the drone. Stay close to the drone! Got it. So we need to stay close to it, otherwise the drone won't move. And as you can imagine, we wanted to do that. Especially since we also have more Reaper forces incoming. So the objective here sounds simple. Guide our drone friend through the area while fending off the enemies. However, as you can see, the Reapers are throwing a good amount of stuff at us. So this is not exactly a trivial task. As you can see in the top right corner then, the drone itself does not only need to be guided, but also protected. It has a fair amount of shields and shouldn't go down too quickly, but still we don't want to leave it exposed for too long either. All in all though, it is probably best to focus on our own survival first. For the first few moments of this fight, the area is swarming with enemies and especially the ravages can kill us quite quickly. And even a slow and steady approach won't put the drone into considerable risk right away. So despite the fact that we have to guide it, my advice would be to just play this section as usual. Even if you take some time, the drone will most likely survive. Thankfully, there are only two repair spots where we need to guide the drone. But still, with another final Banshee showing up, things are getting dicey. Let's head back. The door should be online. And there we go, the drone has done its job and now despawns, the Banshee should probably still be killed. But as far as I know, we could now actually end the fight immediately by sprinting back to the door and interacting with it. Still, as you can see, a single Banshee is no match for us at this point. So let's clean up the area properly before we then finally take a look behind that door. office. Move! I've got a shot! Turn back! Darno! Shepard, over here. What have you got? That was not Garneau. This is. It appears he's been dead for a while. So, Leviathan can have Bryson killed, can take over this colony, and he can use them as puppets. Huh. Anything else useful? Encrypted data, and a personal log with eight missed calls from a Dr. Anne Bryson. And Bryson. Who... Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm Commander Shepard. Are you alright? I think so. I feel like... I feel strange, but... Alright. Alright, so it looks like we have run into more miners. These ones appear to be in full control of their thoughts, though. So let's ask them a few questions about what's going on. Can you tell me anything about what happened to you? Not really. I, uh, remember 
It just seemed cold. I remember a, a feeling cold and dark. If dark was a feeling, that's exactly what I felt. That artifact, do you know where it came from? Came out of the mine. Right. Head office was supposed to send someone. That's about all I can... Do you recognize this man? I've never seen him before in my life. Someone here killed him. Someone here? How is that possible? I'm so sorry. Cortez, what's your situation? Can you bring the shuttle? Affirmative. Strangest thing. A couple of minutes ago, the Reaper forces broke off and left. Reaper? What's a Reaper? What year do you think this is? 2176. 2176 was ten years ago. What? Let's arrange for these people to be evacuated into temporary quarantine. If these people have been out of it for that long, they're in for a shock. It now seems Leviathan not only has the power to destroy a Reaper, but possesses an indoctrination ability. Maybe this thing is a Reaper. And yes indeed, so far Leviathan behaves strangely similar to a Reaper. Still, it also appears to be something different. Either way, I think it's best if we find out more. If it is a Reaper, then I want to know what it's up to. How long has it been out here? And more importantly, why? Edie, did we get anything from Gardo's notes? Yes. They suggest that Garno created a way to block the artifact's mind-affecting properties. The artifact seems to be the key. Agreed. When I head back to Bryson's office, I want you there. Yes, Commander. I want to know just what the hell these artifacts really are and what they can do. Powerful and dangerous. That's what they are. And we've got one sitting right in the middle of the Citadel. Okay, so the Citadel is where we need to go next, but first... Commander. There's a new message at your private terminal. Yes, we have a message, so let's take a look who's writing. And it actually doesn't have anything to do with the mission we just completed. Instead, it is a follow-up from Captain Riley. You might remember her from last episode's fuel reactor's mission. And it appears the Reapers have not stopped attacking the reactor. But in good Solarian fashion, she and her squad are holding the line. And with that, we can quickly head back into the galaxy map and complete just a tiny bit of planet scanning to end today's episode. I promise this will barely take a minute. As a matter of fact, our first target can be found right here in the ice sewer system, and it is also already the last one in here. So, 150 units of fuel richer, we can head back to the mass relay. However, before we head back to the citadel, there are two more locations to scan. Signal confirmed. Luckily, they are very close to each other, so a single scan suffices, and that also means we don't attract any unnecessary Reaper attention. From the rock planet Brest, then, we can recover Synth Diamond Heat Sinks. These are not part of any quest, but instead are converted straight into 25 war asset points, and as you know, we can never have enough of those. Point of interest number two, then, is just another fuel wreckage, and so with the Normandy's tanks more or less filled back up, we can now head back to the Citadel. Before we dock though, I think let's call it an episode for today. Some of our crew members actually also have a few short lines of dialogue to comment on what happened today, but I think we'll listen to those next time when our Leviathan adventure continues. Until then, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.